for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Labor Day Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday afternoon, September the 5th, 2015. Jerry McGee is the speaker of the service teaching on You Can Have What You Say. And Jerry is going to come up and continue the strength in the word that has been given to us this weekend. Start Thursday night with Carla and all through yesterday and today, this morning, and now Jerry is going to come and continue with the meat of the word. If you're timid and you so like to hear what, what's being said, <laughs> Well, <laughs> you just need to hear it anyway. <laughs> okay, Jim. Yeah. 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 Carla said, put your big bar bitches on. <laughs> <laughs> Carla and I are, are roomies. <laughs> I thought I had this thing plugged in. I tell you, like the three stooges. Or one stitch. <laughs> Break that curse, because this is going to be on my word. Amen. Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name, Lord. We forget none of your benefits. You pardon our iniquities and heal all, 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 all our diseases. You redeem our soul from the pit. You crown our life with loving kindness and truth. And you renew our youth as that of the eagle. And eagles have perfect eyes. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Huh? Plums? Plums. Oh. <laughs> plums. I do have good ears. <laughs> Sound like she had plums. She was born with no eardrums, and I tell you, she hears so well. Has a hearing aid company in Ennis, Texas, and if you need a hearing aid, get it from her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Well, this message is you have what you say. Amen? And, you know, that's kind of a simple message. We basically have all heard it. But, you know, we can't, um, we can't say it right if our heart's defiled. Uh, when God, in 2008, when I was diagnosed with an eye problem, that's a fact. But the truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You know, fact and truth are two different things. You can say the fact, this is the fact, but the truth is what God's Word said. Amen. Amen. Amen? And so, I knew that was because I had unbelief and doubt. I knew because I know that sin and sickness are related. And, of course, eye problems was is a generational curse in my family. All of my family members have cataracts, glaucoma, macular generation. And when they were in their 80s and 90s, they were almost blind. And so I knew there was sin in my life. Well, let me just pray for us. Lord, I just thank you and praise you and bless you. You're just a mighty God. Lord, I ask that my words, the, medit- the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable to you, O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Father, I praise you and bless you for, your, for the sword of your word, that your word will not return void. Lord, I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. The leaf withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And Lord, we praise you that you're a God who never changes, that you love us. We thank you that you did it all at Calvary. You shed your precious blood at Calvary, Lord, so that we could be healed, delivered, set free, so that we could love you, Lord, so that you could, so that we could walk in victory and an overcoming life. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We thank you and praise you that we always triumph in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just uh, ask that you be glorified 
We bind you, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places from this meeting, from this camp, from Merrill and Barbara, Patty, Kevin, Linda, Sandy, um, um, Rick. We bind you in the name of Jesus from, from Dan and Crystal and the family and <clears throat> every person at this camp, every teacher at this camp, every person at this camp. And everything that concerns us, we declare you're bound. <clears throat> we loose ministering warring angels in this place, whatever kind of angel we need. Lord, we thank you that your angels watch over your word to perform it. They carry out the voice of your word. Lord, we thank you and praise you that, that, um, that your word is forever settled in heaven and it does not return void. And so, Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name that every person's life will be changed. Father, I pray that you, Lord, I thank you for the warfare that's been against this message. I thank you and praise you that you have a plan bigger than the enemy's plan. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for every person that's watching on the internet. We pray in the name of Jesus for, for um, every person at this camp. We just break the power of every word of death, word of iniquity, curse, assignment, satanic ritual spoken over us, over this camp. In Jesus' name, and Lord, we pray a special covering of warrior angels over this camp, over every person here, um, to, and over the saints all over this earth, the boomerang back on the enemy, every curse and assignment that's sent against us, not to kill them, hurt them, harm them, but so they'll fear God and turn away from evil. So they'll think, how dare I curse what you bless? In Jesus' name, bless the Lord. Uh, but anyway, I started in 2008 knowing that there was sin behind eye problems. And as I've done with any physical thing that came up on me, I always would repent over the Word, pull up, a, pull up Scripture, line my life with the Word, and then I would be healed. In fact, um, that's, how, that's how I would be healed if something came up. I always would repent of sin and then be healed. In fact, two Christmases ago, I was flat on my back for a week, had this green crud in my lungs, um, felt like I was going to pass out when I get up, and thank God that's only been about four or five times in my whole life. But anyway, as I laid there, I began to repent of sin. And at the end of seven days, I never took an antibiotic, I never called the doctor. At the end of seven days, I was totally healed. Because the Bible says He sent His Word to heal you. His word is spirit and life, and he watches over it to perform it. And you know, if the, if the angels watch over God's word to perform it, the demons watch over the devil's word to perform it, which is the contrary to the word of God. Any word that doesn't line up with the word of God is a Satan word, Satan's word. It's either uh, lies or truth. And so I began to, to repent of everything I could think of, do word studies. And I've been doing, because I knew that eye problems was a generational curse in my family. I started in 1987 doing word studies on eye problems, uh, repenting over all the scriptures on eyes, blind, see. I, I did all that from 1987. I began doing that thinking that if I did that, I could prevent myself from having eye problems. And anyway, um, the Lord showed me so much pride in my life. He showed me, oh my goodness, He showed me how haughty, how arrogant I'd been, how insolent, how rude I'd been, and began to show me how judgmental I'd been. And I began to deal with all those things. Well, I repented of everything that I could think of and started doing word studies again. And uh, then it got down to where it was just unbelief. I just couldn't believe. I knew God could, but He probably wouldn't, or maybe He didn't want to. And so um, I've been dealing with unbelief and doubt now for quite a while. When I first started out, it was just unbelief and doubt. And so what the Lord has shown me, that how to build faith in your life is to start planting the Word of God in your spiritual garden. Instead of planting words of doubt, plant words of faith. And, you know, when I did this message, I realized this was almost, at first I thought, this is the same message I did last night. <laughs> but um, it's kind of a little different slant. Now it has to do with the words we speak. And if you have, for example, in your spiritual garden, there's nothing but weeds of doubt and unbelief. 
Your whole garden is full of weeds of doubt and unbelief coming down generationally, coming down through the sins, the sins we've committed, the sins we've done. And then you begin to start planting the Word of God in the place of those doubts. Then the, the, the weeds get thinner and the faith grows. So if you don't, if you have problems believing God in an area, start speaking the scriptures as to what God says about that particular situation and start planting seeds of faith in your spiritual garden. And eventually, the, if you keep saying that over enough, it'll get down in your spirit and become real to you. You can confess negative until you begin to believe it, but you begin to confess uh, what God's Word says because His Word will not return void. Words return void. But God's Word doesn't return void. The Bible says that every idle word that men shall utter, they'll have to give an account of on the day of judgment. Oh my goodness, that's a sobering thought. It says by your words you're justified and by your words you're condemned. Why is that? You speak, uh, you speak negative words and you're condemned. You speak God's word and you'll be justified. Why? Because what comes out of your mouth is revealed in your is revealing your true heart. And so when I got down to realizing, I just didn't really believe God. I mean, I 95% didn't believe Him. And so that was the, that was the issue. And part of that was because of all the negativity generationally, all the the words that my forefathers had spoke over their eyes, uh, the words that I had spoke. And so I began, I'm seeing God reverse that. As God is, is beginning to teach me about my words, I'm trying to, tr it, in fact, if you can transform your, your vocabulary, you can transform your life because you're going to have what you say. And so um, words are powerful. You know, God created the universe. It, it says in the beginning, God said, God said, God said, God said. And so words are, in, words are powerful. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. If I keep speaking death over my life, guess what? I'm going to get what I say. I speak, keep speaking life and I'm going to get what I say. Because the whole issue of God, of our Christian life is to, to have faith, because without faith, God, it, it, it's impossible to please God. And maybe, maybe you're like me. You've realized that most of my problems have been because I've had a mouth problem. And we all, have, in fact, I'm pray, I pray, Lord, teach me how to talk. Yes. Too many words. There was a time in my life I could go out to eat with somebody, and I talked so much I'd come away condemned. Praise God, I don't do that anymore. I thank God. I thank God. And so we can transform our life by transforming our vocabulary. And our vocabulary shouldn't be ours. It should be what God's Word says. We need to say what God says. And so really this message really came out of what God has been showing me how to have faith when I didn't have it. I say, Lord, I believe you. Help my unbelief. But see, if I'm saying that and I'm still speaking negative, speaking negative, and you know, you feel so stupid, like if you're on the telephone with, uh, say, I use Plum Choice with, for my computer service online 24-7. And, uh, you know, they'll say, well, you see that little button up there? Well, you say, well, I can't see it. Say, well, Lord, how do I talk? I mean, how, and so they the saying, well, the fact is, today I can't see it. <laughs> but the truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. It's like, oh, that's crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you say it? Because, you, you know, and, and you find yourself trying to explain because you feel so stupid, which is really pride. So, Lord, forgive me for pride. Or can't you see that? <laughs> well, today, I'm saying today momentarily, I can't. That's a fact. But the truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Amen. So faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if I'm hearing myself keep on saying negative things, then doubt comes, fear comes, unbelief, and doubt comes. But if I keep on saying what God says, then my faith is built. And so uh, 
When we sow seeds in our spiritual garden by speaking the devil's words, which is words that contradict the word of God, then I'm planting thorns and thistles in my spiritual garden. And so it's almost like if I keep on doing it, I'm, I'm, one minute I'm saying the word of God, and the next minute I'm saying negative words. It's like the further I go, the behinder I get. So I have to change the way I talk to, to believe God and to have 100% faith. And it's coming, but the Lord has shown me that's the key to victory in having faith is to say what God's word says. Whatever your problem is, Look up scriptures that have to do with your problem and start telling the devil when he wants to lie to you or deceive you or tell you that your kids are going to never be saved or, or um, you're going to go broke or you can't pay your bills or you're going to get sick and die. Start telling him he's a liar in Jesus' name. There's so many promises in God's word to God for, for, for our children. He wants above all that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. And that word soul is your mind, your psyche. And so whenever you line your life with the word of God, then prosperity and health come. And you know, uh, God gives us the, the key to victory in the, in the scripture in, in Mark 11.23 where he says... Um, where he says, um, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed if you don't doubt in your heart that you believe what you say. And then it goes on to say, You'll have, in King James, I like that better than New American Standard, it says, And you'll have whatsoever you desire. But you have to, you have to believe it. And so when I speak to the mountain of my problems, there would always be that doubt in my heart. So I begin to say, well, Lord, I've got doubt in my heart. So how do I have faith? You have faith by planting faith into your spiritual garden. That's how you have it. Because then the faith is going to overtake the negative and the doubt and the unbelief. And so whatever your mountain is, if it's financial problems, if it's fi um, uh, problems with your mate, problems with your children, um, problems with your health or whatever you're believing God for and you don't, uh, you don't really believe it. God says that if your conscience is clear, you have confidence before God. So I knew that I didn't have faith because my conscience was not clear in some areas. And so whenever your conscience is clear, faith is a gift. It'll come automatically. And so... Um, so that's been a part of my testimony of asking God, you know, where, what, when, how, um, what sin he, does he want me to repent of. You know, if we, for example, if we, and, and we've all done this, this is not going to condemn anybody. We speak negatively over our children. And, and we put our negative over our mate or negative over our situation. And we put people in a spiritual prison because we bind them with our words. The Bible says, whosoever, whoso, uh, um, whosoever sins you uh, forgive or forgiven, whosoever sins you retain are retained. And so, you know, I think about my son Todd when he was a little boy and he'd lie to me. And I didn't know about the power of words. And I say, that kid is the biggest liar I've ever seen. Guess what? He was a liar his whole life until he was on his bed, deathbed. And that's when I knew he was saved. Because he lied to me and he said, Mom, I, I, I want to tell you, I told you a lie. I knew that's when he had been born again. It's when he told me the truth. Because the Bible says no liar will enter the kingdom of heaven. But we bind people, we bind our children with words. But if we're praying for our children, first examine, did I do anything they're doing? Because the law of sowing and reaping says, if I don't deal with everything I did that they're doing, the reaping will continue and they'll never change until I deal with what I did that they're doing. And that's, that's in, in every situation. I've learned that when I have a problem or something grieves my heart, I just, I've learned, Lord, did I, did I do this? Either I did it or I judged somebody for it. Because God's trying to mirror something. He's trying to, uh, to heal in me. 
And I'm so thankful that God taught me that because then if I have a problem with a person and I deal with my sin in the midst of it and I see I did the same thing, then I'm not, you know, you don't want to even want to be mad at the other person. You know that God is trying to get to your attention. He's trying to show you something. And it helps you to walk in victory. It helps you to love people. It helps you to just believe that God's going to take care of things when you do get your heart right. And so when we get our lives right, then, then the people around us are going to change. And so, um, but, but in that scripture, uh, of if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, first of all, you have to say it to the mountain. You have to see to the mountain. Then you have to, you cannot doubt in your heart. You've got to believe what you say. And then it says you'll have whatsoever you desire. Praise God. And so you can speak to the mountain all day long, but if you doubt in your heart, it's not going to work. How do I know? My own personal experience. Get out of me, I problems. <laughs> and so they don't leave because as long as there's doubt there, there's still something in my conscience that's violated. There's something that's down in my spiritual garden that uh, I don't yet see. A lot of unresolved things that we don't even see. You know, you can be as repentant as you know how to be on the surface. But there's so many things, experiences, things that have been done to you, things you've said, things you've done, things your forefathers have done, that you don't see it all. My goodness, we'd pass out if we saw it all. Thank God for being so merciful that He disciplines every son whom He loves to correct those mistakes, to line us up with the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Now, an example of this, you know, the, the children of Israel, they didn't... Um, let me pull this thing, pull this wire. Turn your plug. Oh. Stay there. Thank you. That's what happens when I thought I was plugged in at the thing. This thing keeps coming out. Maybe I can lay it under here. Why don't you tie it in a knot? That's what we have to do with the weed either. Tie it in a knot and then it can't fall out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Technology. Amen. You know, I, I don't think our forefathers had to deal so much with uh, their, their spiritual gardens. I don't think there was as much trash in it as it's been in today with the technology we have. You know, you live on a farm and all you do is you're a farmer and you still have to... You still have to deal with your stuff, but you don't have the technology, you don't have the TV, you don't have the movies, you don't have all the influx of garbage that's been into our lives. Thank you. But, and you know, it's a well-conceived plot by the enemy to do that to us, to contaminate us, to defile us, to make us unholy and hallowed, so that we uh, don't have the holiness that causes us to be able to see God. I mean, it, 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 the, the, the devil is a lot smarter than we are. But we have authority over him, praise God. He's a defeated foe because of what Jesus did at Calvary. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. But you know what? We're to be, we're to be wise people. And for the most part, the body of Christ is not very wise. Because we're, we just fall right into the traps. And so, Lord, we pray that you make us mindful of those traps. In Jesus' name. And so, so in, in other words, we really, we have what we say. And we just have to live with it till we make it void. Until we cancel the word we spoke, we have to live with it. Because we have what we say. So we've got a lot of things to cancel. I do. A lot of words that, I, that we need to break. Over our families, over our mates, over our situation, over our circumstances. Because um, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so have you th however you think is what you're going to speak. But the children of Israel, they weren't defeated by the Nephilim giants that were in the land. They were defeated by their own words. By giving a bad report. The Bible says it was an evil report. God had told him to go in and possess the land. It wasn't blind optimism. God said, I've already, you've already, the, the land is yours, just go take it. And so you know the story in Numbers how Moses sent in the 12 spies and 10 came back with a negative report. 
And they said, you know, the giants in the land are so big that we look like grasshoppers in their sight. And it talked about their cities being walled. And after Randy showed some of those big tons, all those rocks that weighed tons, that there was no way they could move them, that, that must have looked pretty hopeless. Must have looked like a mountain, right, that you couldn't move. And, and you know, the children of Israel, they cut just one little cluster of grapes, and it was so big that it took two men on a pole to carry those grapes. So that really confirms the story of the Nephilim. The, the giants were the Nephilim in the land. And if the grapes were that big, and it took two men to carry one little cluster, my goodness. And you, you, you can just imagine the whole situation looked pretty bleak. But Joshua and Caleb have said, we can take it, we can go up, let's do it. And you know, Joshua and Caleb were the only two of their generation that entered the promised land because they said we could, the children of Israel said we can't. Because the ten spies said you can't, Joshua and Caleb said you can, and they believed the ten spies. And so they began to say they couldn't do it. And guess what? They didn't do it because they said they couldn't do it. You know, God tells us that he's already won the victory. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. All things through Christ who strengthens us. We're more than a conqueror through him that loved us. We always triumph in Jesus' name. We rule and reign in Jesus' name. Praise God. God doesn't want anybody reigning over us. Just Jesus. And that's it. And so, um, Joshua and Caleb gave a report of, of uh, victory, that they could do it. And the, the children of Israel that were the same in the generations of Joshua and Caleb, they died in the wilderness, never entering the promised land because they were defeated not by the Nephilim, but by their own words. So we don't have to fear if you come up against Nephilim, if he's 40 foot tall, you have authority over him in the name of Jesus. He's just a demon. Praise God. God says, fear not. The victory's already won. We've already defeated Satan at Calvary. God says, submit yourself to me and resist the devil, and he has to flee. He has no choice but to flee. So thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Bible called this an evil report because they spoke negatively. Uh, God called it an evil report because it was not words of faith. So it's evil. We give evil reports when we don't speak uh, words that uh, cause us to be justified. We speak words that cause us to be condemned because they're idle words, worthless words. And so they didn't enter the promised land. And, you know, this was, this was an example uh, of faith in reverse. You know, if you, if you are doubting, you really are believing in something. It's faith in what the devil tells you instead of faith in what God tells you. And all of us have circumstances that can be overwhelming at times. But God wants us to see victory from what God says. We, we are victors. We're victorious because of the battle's been won by him. And so we have a land to possess and we've got stuff in our spiritual garden on our land that we have to overcome. The promises of God are to the overcomer, not to the overcome. And you always get in your life what you believe. Doesn't Jesus say over and over and over in the word of God to him who has faith? Be it to you, be it unto you according to your faith. He says that over and over. There's so many instances where he would heal somebody or do something, and then he'd say, Be it unto you according to your faith. So it's be it unto us according to our faith. We all have areas that's lacking in faith. You know, you can believe God in a hundred thousand areas and something over here, but some area that God's trying to deal with, you don't have the faith. And so it has to be built up by saying what God says. <clears throat> and so we keep on uh, quoting God's word, and eventually it will become down into our spirit. Proverbs 18 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In other words, what comes out of your mouth, you'll have to live with until you 
deal with it God's way. The mouth feels... I'm sorry, I'm here. Matthew 12 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we, we covered this last night, but it really ties in with this message. Uh, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. And it's impossible to have faith if we've got... Uh, our consciences are defiled. If we've got stuff down there uh, that's not God, it's impossible to have faith and to speak words of faith. If what's in my heart comes out my mouth, if my heart's not right, I'm not going to say the right thing. And so I have to get my heart right before my words become right. I have to have my heart right before my thought life becomes right. The purer our heart, the purer our words, and the purer our thoughts, and the purer our actions. David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit, that I might teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners might be converted. Proverbs 10 verse 3 says the lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable. Proverbs 12 14 says a man will be satisfied by, with good by the fruit, the fruit of his words. Proverbs 13 3 says he who guards his mouth and his tongue preserves his life. Proverbs 16 23 says the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Proverbs 16:24. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. You see that if I speak God's word, how eventually it will bring healing to my life? Besides that, the Bible says he sent his word to heal me. He didn't send folks. They can patch you up, but they can't heal you. Help you hang in there. And then you have all the repercussions of what they did, the scar tissue and all that stuff of what they did. So, um, people say, well, Jerry, why don't you just go to the doctor and have those cataracts cut off? Why don't you just do that? And so my answer is, God, if you tell me to do that, I will. But every time I ask you, I hear a big, loud no. Maybe it's because the Bible says there's a stricter judgment on a teacher. I don't know. But I'm going to do whatever he says. But I've been here knows. It's much easier to do that than it is to walk this out in faith. Much easier. In fact, this is probably the most frustrating thing of my whole life. Especially, you know, if you've been a person that's been kind of independent, now you have to depend on people to drive you around sometime. Sometime. No. <laughs> and I can make it, but it's just uh, the glare right now, the glare on the road and all that stuff, it just gets, it just, it, it just, uh, it's, it's an endurance test. And so I can do it. And so um, I said the other day, Lord, you'll be quit driving. He said, no. I said, you'll be quit teaching. He said, no. I said, well, Lord, how are you going to do all this? He said, i got plans. <laughs> I've got plans for you. <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad you've got a plan. <laughs> all my plans have run out. <laughs> and, you know, that's good. It's good that your plans run out because he wants your plans to be his plan. Uh, Proverbs 18.7 A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Proverbs 22:11 says, "He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious is the king's friend." Now, who's the king? I want to be the king Jesus's friend. Proverbs 23:15 says, "Wisdom says, my son, if your heart is wise, my soul will be glad, and my inmost being will rejoice when you speak what's right." James 3 says, if you can control your tongue, you can control your whole body. When I was preparing this message a few days ago and was having difficulty seeing the computer, I kept saying, eyes, I command you to see in Jesus' name. If I can control my body by the words I speak, we need to start speaking to the situation, right? And so... <coughs> James uh, likens the tongue to a, to a rudder on a ship. 
and he likens you to be the ship. And so if my tongue is the rudder that guides my ship, my words set on fire the course of my life. And so if I control my tongue, I can control the direction of my life. This is sobering, but let me tell you something. This is key to walking in victory. And that's the purpose of this. Revelation 12, 11 says, We overcome by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony, and we love not our life even to death. You know, people say we overcome by the word of blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony. What goes with all that is loving not your life. You have to give up your life that you might find it. And when you give up your life, fear will leave because you're, you're, you know your life is in God's hands. And I can, I can stand here and I can tell you I don't have any fear that whatever, whatever the outcome, I believe I'm healed. I'm going to stand on that. But whatever the outcome, I have no fear. As long as I'm trusting God and do what he's telling me to do, then I don't have any fear of any outcome of anything. But if I'm holding on to my life, it's got to be this way. It's got to be that way. Why? This is what I think ought to happen. This has to happen this way. It can't happen that way. I think this. I think that. Give it up. When you give it up, fear will leave. That's the perfect love that casts out fear. And so we overcome by the blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony, and we love not our life. In this scripture in Psalms it says, Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and whoever orders his conversation aright, I will show him my salvation. So ask God to show you the sin that brought in the problem, what he's trying to correct, what he's trying to discipline, uh, what he's trying to do to align your life with the word of God. Um... And I said this uh, last night, but ask God, I mean, listen to what comes out your mouth and what comes up into your thought life and deal with it. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, then you repent. There's something to repent of. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, then it's coming out of defilement of the heart. Ask God to cleanse you from all defilement by the blood of Jesus. And then join me in um, asking God to transform my my vocabulary so that my life can be transformed. This is a sharp message, but I've said enough. (laughs) So stand up and let's pray. And besides this, might give you a little nap before dinner. Again. (laughs) Lord, in Jesus' name, how have I bound myself with my words? What have I been thinking that don't line up with your word? What have I been speaking that doesn't line up with your word? What am I thinking in my heart that has caused me to to be that way? If I feel like a failure, guess what? You'll be one. And so, Lord, forgive me for feeling like a failure. Forgive me for feeling hopeless. Forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for having a sore mouth. Forgive me for speaking the devil's words. Lord, in Jesus' name, forgive me for doubting. And Lord, remind me when I speak to the mountain that if I'm doubting in my heart, that means I've got defilement in my heart. Because if my conscience is clear... I have confidence before you. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, show me how I've bound my children, my mate, my circumstances, how I've bound my life, how I'm sick because of my words. So, Lord, I ask for the truth that sets me free. In Jesus' name, praise you, Lord. Search my heart, O God. Test my thoughts. Show me every way I've imprisoned other people and imprisoned my own life in Jesus' name. And then just deal with it and then just sit down and we'll do deliverance. And You don't have to sit down until you repent it. <laughs> Some of you have already repented. That was quick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't let sin pile up. 
deal with it deal with it daily moment by moment the minute you see and deal with it the minute you say a negative word ask God to forgive you and break the curse and ask God, ask God how it got there okay if, you, if you're the ship and your tongue's a rudder and you've got to control the rudder the tongue in order to get the ship going in the right direction you can't control the rudder because you can't control the tongue the Bible says it's a restless evil full of deadly poison and no one can tame it but if you deal with the heart issues then the, the word will be pure then your rudder will go right does that make sense? So, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for the truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name, we we break soul ties with every person that we've judged, every person who's judged us. We break soul ties with every person we've put in a prison through speaking negative words over them. Father, we nullify, make void, and cancel every word of death, every word of iniquity, every curse assignment that we've spoken over ourselves, our circumstances, our mates, our children, our own life, our finances, our jobs, our businesses, we cancel in the name of Jesus every word of death, word of iniquity. We cancel the words we spoke that the devil said to us, you're never going to change, you're never going to get free. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And we break the power of those words. We break soul ties with every person that uh, we have hurt or who has hurt us. Uh, We forgive our mother and father for the words they spoke over us when they said you're a failure, you'll never amount to anything, you're fat, you're ugly, you're no good, I don't want you. We break the power, nullify, make void, cancel all the words parents spoke over us. We pull out all those arrows that people have spoken over us. We pull out the arrows we've spoken over other people. We take people out of the spiritual prison we've put them in through judging them. We forgive every person that has been uh, cantankerous, every person that's given us a hard time. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we forgive ourselves. We forgive uh Uh, our mates, our families, our mothers, fathers, our children, uh, in Jesus' name. And we just uh, sever all soul ties with each person that we've been involved with, that we've cursed or who's cursed us. We sever every cord of control linking their souls to ours. We call back our soul and spirit from them. We send back their souls and spirits to them. We change their image for the image of Christ. Now every demon come out. I pull down, uproot, and pluck out every negative word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every demon of fear has to go. All spirits of doubt and unbelief. We just pluck, pull down, uproot, and pluck out all the devil's words. We break the power of rejection, self-hatred. We break the power of self-contempt, unloving spirits. We break the power of lust. We break the power of pornography. We break the power of unbelief and doubt, lies and lying. We break the power of deception, delusion. We break the power of the spirits that block the truth that sets us free. We break the power of anger. We break the power of, Lord, forgive us for being mad at you and thinking I'm trying to do right and I'm trying to do this and you let this happen. In the name of Jesus, I forgive you, God. In Jesus' name, I command every spirit, every lie, a uh, lying spirit to leave every person that tells you that God's just like your mother or father. I command you to go all anger, all bitterness, self-bitterness. Arthritis in the feet because I'm bitter toward my path. Arthritis in the hands because I'm bitter toward ministry, toward pastors. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of every spirit that's in each person's bones. I break the power of dry bones, dead bones. In Jesus' name, I break the power of of demonic fire in the bones. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of self-contempt and loving spirits, antichrist spirits, rebellion. I command you to go. Pride, arrogance, boastfulness, egotism, haughtiness. I command spirits of Python, Leviathan, get out in Jesus' name. We break your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command you to go. 
The weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but mighty to God for the smashing down of strongholds. We smash down these strongholds of unbelief and doubt, lies and lying, deception, delusion, a disillusionment, hopelessness, defeat, failure, depression. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. I break the power of pharmakia and sorcery in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I command you to loose everybody in this room in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we cast down every imagination, every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive in our lives every thought to the obedience of Christ. We punish every disobedience because our obedience is complete. In Jesus' name, now all you demons should come out of every life. Now, out in Jesus' name. I command you out in the name, power, blood, and by the authority of Jesus. Come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power. I break the power of every lie. All rejection has to go. All fear has to go. Unloving spirits have to go. Every spirit we've named, every demon that came in through the sins that have been confessed, get out now in Jesus' name. You have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Praise you, mighty God. Bless you, Lord. Thank you that you inhabit our praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, for setting our families free. Thank you that the children of the righteous are blessed. The children of the righteous are delivered. Thank you, Lord, that the loving kindness of the Lord is to the thousandth generation of those who keep covenant with you and remember your precepts to do them. Bless you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. When you feel a release, lift your hands and sing with me. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Lord forgive me for having a critical heart and a judgmental heart, and I command the spirit of criticism and judgmentalness, get out now in Jesus' name. We're all a work in progress. All has to go in the name of Jesus, and by the authority that God's given me in the name of Jesus, I release healing over each person, healing, deliverance, salvation, peace, Victory, overcoming in Jesus' name. If we just lose peace, the Prince of Peace, into every situation in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. And Lord, I know the food, I don't know what time it is, but the food is, uh, we'll just pray for it anyway. So when you go in there, Lord, we ask you to bless the food, purify it, sanctify it, cleanse it. Lord, we receive it with gratitude. We thank you for it. Thank you that you bless our bread and water. You satisfy our mouth with good things. Thank you that you renew our youth as that of the eagle. Thank you that we can eat anything, and then I'm not speaking of food here, but any food you eat is full of preservatives, right? All the corn is genetically modified in this country. Everything's getting genetically modified. There's no seed in the watermelons now, and there's no... And so, Lord, and, and we need to do this every time we pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we can eat or drink anything deadly and it won't even hurt us. In Jesus' name, praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. And I just loose over them a spirit of faith, Lord, mountain-moving faith in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.